afternoon VC vinyl community. Mississauga, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the Northern Hemisphere, the Western Hemisphere, Earth, the galaxy, the universe, wherever you're beaming this video in from, whether it's on your cell phone, your iPad, your tablet, your laptop, your PC, your video game console, wherever, however, whenever, welcome to my channel. I'm AGK, otherwise known as Anthony K, and this is currently titled AGK Lifetime of Vinyl, for lack of a better name at the moment. But I hope I don't completely suck at this video, and I can be somewhat entertaining. It's taken me six months just to get enough of enough nerve to do this. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I've been inspired by a number of vinyl community YouTube channels that I watch regularly and enjoy very much. And I thought I'd hop on the uh, proverbial bandwagon, throw in my two cents worth and my record collection and maybe some CDs, who knows where I'm gonna go with this. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I hope you enjoy it and haven't switched off yet. I do wanna thank some people for inspiring me to do this, first off, before anything. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Channel 333 RPM, Frank Landry, one of the first VC videos I ever saw. So I'm wearing uh, your shirt in, in honor of my first video. So thank you for uh, all your great videos and what you've done. And I hope I can contribute in some way and be uh, entertaining and show some things that uh, I don't see other people showing. Uh, also, I want to set, thank another good friend uh, on the Instagram and YouTube, uh, Naz Nomaz out of uh, Edmonton, I believe, Alberta. Frank's out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Fellow Canadians, Naz Nomad, another fellow I talk to regularly. Enjoy his videos immensely. And uh, he gave me a few pointers in getting this thing started. So thank you to him. Uh, other people I enjoy watching, Melinda Murphy. She's great. Uh, she loves the Beatles and Palma Gardney and Van Halen and Kiss and stuff, but I still, she's great. She's great. I love her and I love watching her videos. So shout out to you and hello to you. Uh, other people I watch for the record, uh, another fellow out of here of Toronto and too many records and uh, spin me around record store. There's a lot, but those, uh, first few are the ones I watch the most. So it's you guys that have inspired me to do this video in the first place. Uh, where you got see me sitting right now, this is uh, my man cave, I guess you could call it. I think people call it. Uh, what I plan to do in this video, is, as long as I don't completely bugger it up and uh, make a mess, is I uh, do a room tour. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to do it in two parts because I've got my uh, phone set up on a tripod here and my studio lighting and this and that. So I guess there's going to be a pause while I take it all apart and grab it and then walk around the room. But yeah, this is my uh, music room, video room, video game room, uh, collector's corner of the universe where I've got absolutely too much stuff crammed into this, I think 14 by 14 foot space. It might be a little bigger than that. It might be actually, I don't know, who cares? Who cares? Um, let's wipe my whistle here. Pepsi, not beer. Uh, I wanna stay sober for this. Uh, so in front of me here, you can probably see just at the top, this is a bunch of 45s. This is my uh, collection of 45s right here, sitting on this. This uh, right here that I'm banging on is uh, where some records are. And it will also be where I sit and uh, show records. You'll see that soon enough. Behind me is a bunch of videos. Uh, piles and piles and piles of videos. Uh, everything you can think of, yes. Yes, yes, lots of videos, movies, TV series, all that. I hung this uh, Great Iron Maiden banner up from the last concert last summer up there just to be entertaining. Um, but what am I going to do on this channel? You're probably wondering, well, I'm going to show records. I'm going to show lots of records, uh, just like all vinyl community channels. Um, but what I plan on showing, I hope I'm not repeating what other people show. Uh, I'm going to try to be original. Uh, I'm going to show things I love. Uh, I think vinyl is subjective. Um, I see a lot of these channels doing ratings, um, 
best to worst album. Um, honestly, my best album could be your worst album. Uh, to each their own. You know, every album is fantastic to somebody. So I'm never going to do a rating because that's just, it means nothing because it'd be my ratings. It wouldn't be anybody else's ratings. It wouldn't be any ratings that would mean anything to the great scheme of life. So I'm not going to do any ratings um, other than saying that I love this album. Um, yes, there's groups I love. Everybody has their own groups I love and you'll be seeing some of the things I love. Um, but like I said, I want to show some vinyl records that I haven't seen other people showing or at least shown very rarely um, to keep things interesting. Uh, I, I listen to everything. I listen to, I mean, I've been buying records since I was a wee teenager. Uh, about the earliest record I can remember buying is probably around 71, 72. And I was probably only an 11, 12 year old kid by then. Yes, I'm that old. Um, but I followed records for long. I've had tons of records. Uh, I used to go down to Sam the Record Man and uh, as a kid, as a kid, line up for records on Boxing Day. Uh, best sale in the world was Sam the Record Man, Boxing Day. But yeah, I followed records deeply uh, right through the 70s into the mid late 80s when then CDs started to come around and I, I stupidly sold a lot of my records thinking that CDs were going to be the next thing and that records were going to become obsolete. I, I mean, I did keep my favorites, rare pressings, stuff I knew was, was, I just loved and would never get rid of. Um, but, you know, traded in the bulk of them to get into the CD world and followed CDs for about 20 years and then saw records were making a comeback. Uh, was tired of, you know, the streaming and the digital and this and that. And I said, okay, I'm going to pull out my records from storage, pull my turntables out of storage, get back into the thing, which, I, which I've done here in the 2000s. Um, and love it once again. Uh, it's the only way to listen to music as far as I'm concerned. It's the best way to listen to music. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, yes, I'll be showing 45s. 12 inches, 10 inches. I might show some CDs because there is, you know, there's still room for CDs out there because there's a lot of things that were released on CD that you can't get on vinyl and may never be able to get on, to, on vinyl records. So definitely I'll be showing those things um, because they're worth having. If you're a true collector of any particular artist, you might have to go both vinyl, CD, cassette, whatever to get their entire library because not everything will ever get pressed on or repressed or reissued or pressed for the first time on vinyl records. Um, so yeah, you're going to be seeing that on my channel. Uh, I'm going to show a lot of things. I don't know what I'm going to show next, uh, but my next video will definitely be pulling a stack of records out and showing you what I've got and maybe inspire some people to look at artists that maybe you've never listened to before. And maybe I can inspire you because I listen to everything. I mean, I listen to everything. I grew up in classic rock days, so I listened to classic rock, new wave punk, a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of R&B, a little bit of rap. Uh, I try to keep current, uh, so I listen to everybody. I think music is ageless, first of all. You, I can listen to Britney Spears, I can listen to Ariana Grande, I can listen to Black Sabbath, I can listen to Rolling Stones, 60s Rolling Stones. I listen to it all. I listen to everything. I don't think you're too old to ever listen to any artist. Um, music is music. Music's for everybody. And you should listen to it all. You shouldn't stick in one genre that maybe you grew up with and never move out of that. So I have everything. Soundtracks, jazz. Uh, I'm just looking around here. Oh. Pop, punk, electronic, techno, trance, everything. I listen to it all. Love it all. Uh, you never know what you're in the mood for, so it's good to have something to listen to no matter what your mood. Um, yeah, I'm a gamer. I, yes, yeah. at my age, yeah, I still play games. I grew up on Pong, you know, Pong machines, turn two little dials and watch a ball go back and forth. Grew up on Pong machines, but I play PS4, Nintendo Switch, everything. I do it all. I don't know how I find time to do it all, but I do. So, without further ado, uh, what else can I tell you? Thank you all, you guys, for inspiring me to do this channel. Uh, I hope I can entertain you. I hope I don't completely suck. 
Please, if I suck, tell me in the comments. I think they're supposed to, you're supposed to do this, this. Comments below, ideas, anything you'd like to say, comments below. Uh, I will also put links below for uh, NAS Nomad, Channel 33, Frank Landry, Melinda Murphy, people that have inspired me. Their links are going to be low. However, I got to do that. I haven't even figured out how to do that yet. But once I get this video made and try to get to uploading it, I'll be putting links below. I welcome your comments. And I think you're supposed to say ring the bell and turn notifications on and all that stuff. You do what you want. I hope I get some subscribers. Please subscribe. Uh, I have a lot of things to show you, thousands of things to show you. So I really hope you like it. Uh, I'm going to try to pause this video now. And we are going to go and do a room tour because I think that's the best place to start. Then you can kind of see what you're going to see, but not see. Something like that. I don't know. I need another drink. Yeah. But yeah, you're going to see some things. I'm going to show you around what I've got set up. I'm always changing this thing around. I swear. Every few weeks, I'm moving stuff around the room. I'm reorganizing my records, reorganizing everything. I, you just, I think that's what you do when you're a record collector. You, you just completely reorganize and clean stuff all the time while you're listening. Uh, there's no, and that's another thing. Uh, I don't buy vinyl that I don't plan on listening to. I know there's a lot of collectors out there. They buy the vinyl, they show it off, they show their records off, and they never listen to them. They just buy them to have them. I don't understand that. Music is meant to be listened to. I don't understand why people do this. Uh, I know some people just want to flip it and make a buck. Uh, that's not why I buy records. I don't buy records to make a buck. Uh, if I did, I wouldn't have thousands of records. Uh, I buy records to listen to them and enjoy them, and l I love music. I love listening to music. Um, so, yeah, I don't buy anything to sell it. I mean, yes, I do have records for sale, uh, duplicates and things like that, because, yeah, you got to thin out your collection every once in a while, but that's not why I buy records. Um, so I know a lot of you, a lot of you have five, six, seven, ten copies of an album, and that's great. I love it. Fine. If that's your thing, great. I'm not knocking anybody that does that. Um, I understand looking for a better pressing. You may be out in the wild, you find one, you know, you pick up a record, it's not the greatest, but you haven't seen it before, so you grab it just to have it, even though it's a pile of crap as far as quality, sound goes, and you just hope one day you'll get a better copy. I understand that, um, but I, I'm not one to have 20 pressings of a record. I don't need. I do my research first. I know what I'm looking for. If I can't have what I want, then I don't want anything less, if that makes sense. Uh, I want, uh, you know, if I want a Japanese, if I, there's, if I know there's a Japanese pressing of something, then I go after that and I wait for that. I don't settle for anything less. Uh, I don't need 20 copies of the same album. I just don't see the point. I mean, some people collect them, they just want to collect and I, yeah, hey, no problem. I mean, I have groups that, yes, I have groups that I love and artists that I love, that I have to have everything from them and I maybe have some duplicate pressings of things but not very many because, like I said, I listen to every single record album. So I don't need 20 copies of one record album to listen to it because that's 19 copies of an album that I could be listening to somebody else. You know, I need one copy of an album to listen to that person. And I don't need 20 because the other 19 I will listen to, you know, 19 other people I could be listening to. Time is short. We're not on this planet for a long time. And if I want to listen to everything before I drop dead, then I can't be listening to 20 different pressings of an album just to hear it. And I don't have time in my life to do that. So that's, you know, great for everybody. But most of the stuff you're going to see, I have one, sometimes a couple pressings of. Um, most of the times they were an upgrade or a reissue or something. Um, but that's how I do things. That's my way. I hold out for the pressing I want. Or if I have a pressing that's decent, I'm not really going to go looking for another pressing unless it's something really spectacular. You know, certainly alternate covers, uh, things like that. Yeah, I'm going to get the same record if it had two different covers or things like that. Uh, that's oh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? You know, I'm not scripting this. I'm not pausing and restarting this. Like I see some YouTube videos, there's a little <coughs> every few seconds where they have stopped and corrected. This is like on the fly. I'm just sitting here doing this. No editing. Uh, the only time I'm going to stop this video is to go and do the room tour. 
because then I got to go pick up the camera, bring it around, and take you guys on a tour. Uh, I know there's a lot of things I probably wanted to say that I've forgotten to say, but hopefully there'll be lots more videos for me to say those things. Uh, so yeah, I don't have multiple copies of the music. I listen to every single piece of music I own. If I find something out in the wild that hasn't been opened ever for the last 50 years, 40 years, I open it and I listen to it. You know, my mother said something to me once. She goes, I brought home a record about a year ago. It was uh, actually a James Bond theme record. Never been opened. Uh, was printed in like 1965 pressed in 1965 was still sealed with this shrink had never ever been opened and I got it dirt cheap at a flea market and I was so excited I brought it home and my mom said you know what that album was waiting for you to play it so I could have flipped you know I could do like people say flip it don't open it are you crazy Anthony flip that sucker you know it's sealed you can make some money on it flip it flip it flip it now nah. it's been sealed waiting for me to listen to and that's how I look into it and it was so nice to just cut into that with my fingernail down that side there, slide out that record that had been hiding inside that cover for 50 years, slide it onto the turntable and give it its first spin because it was waiting for me to listen to it. And that's how I look at it. So yeah, I don't care. Wherever I buy my album, if it's sealed, it's opening. It's getting open and it's getting played because that is what you do with music. So on that note, I guess I am going to take you all on a room tour, uh, and I hope you enjoy my room tour. I don't know how long it'll be. Uh, I guess I have to patch the, the room tour and this video together somehow, some way. But I will see you in a few seconds with the room tour. Okay, welcome back, Vinyl Community. Uh, this is part two of this video. This is the room tour. Just gonna grab myself a drink here. My throat's a little scratchy. <clears throat> And uh, a couple of people I forgot to shout out that I meant to. Um, I think I said 20 records. That should have been too many records. And I forgot to mention uh, Omaha Introvert, I think she's called. I uh, enjoy her stuff too, just to uh, make those corrections. But now we're going to go on with the room tour. Uh, this is where I was sitting before I've just moved the stool. I was sitting right here in front of the records when I was talking to you guys. So I'm um, right here in one of my record areas. And this is uh, a bunch of 45s in here. We'll show some of these later. These are all old original 45s as he pulls the little sleeve out of there. And these are old originals. We got some record store day. Collection of 45s there, which I normally keep there. Uh, you can see some Funkos there. We got Kiss, we got Cooper. We got Hendrix, Joey Ramone, Freddie Mercury, Prince. Yeah, and over here, is my first, I, there's my guitar amplifier down there. As you can see, I do play guitar, which is over here. That's a Santana, PRS, Santana edition. Uh, and this is the first bin right here. So what do we have over here is, uh, behind here is all my jazz. Uh, this here, as you can see, is new and reissued instrumental jazz. So that's uh, instrumental just up there. Uh, behind here, we've got, as you can see, Record Store Day limited edition jazz LPs and old 50s and 60s instrumental and jazz in there. And when I say 50s and 60s, I mean 50s and 60s pressings. Uh, my stuff I organize by pressing date, uh, but they're also alphabetical and in genres. Behind here, we've got old original 70s 80s disco funk r&b and we also have new disco funk r&b rap lps these are all new pressings so that's that in that bin there over here we've got metal we got 2000s new and reissued metal it's metal on that side completely full that iron maiden box is completely full of iron maiden lps and that's all metal in there down here, we have soundtrack LPs. New and old, new reissues, and of course, original, old, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. Uh, soundtrack LPs. Uh, next to it, we have comps. New and old record comps. Record store day comps. And there, right here, 
is basically all new vinyl and CDs. New records, new CDs that I have not yet played. Yes, I have too much music to listen to. But all this stuff here is all my stuff waiting to be played. It's basically in order from right to left of when I bought it, when I purchased it, when I found it, whatever. So this is all new sealed reissues, releases, new issues, new music, old music, but it's all waiting to be played. And I just try to keep, I try to play it in order of when I got it. This chunk here that's sort of sticking out, this is old vinyl, uh, but new. Stuff I found in the wild on recent thrift stores and whatnot. The rest of this is all new sealed vinyl. Um, even a box of test pressings right here. Um, so that's stuff waiting to be played, sitting in those bins. On the end here, in this little bin, I call this my new releases bin. This is basically stuff that's high in my playlist. Things over the past year that I'm listening to repeatedly over and over. Sort of my top, it's like my top 50, which includes even old, out in the wild, old, old, old pressings. But this is basically my top 50 stuff that I'm really hooked on, really spinning a lot. Right here in this bin here. That's the top 50 bin. I know it says new releases, but it's sort of new releases, top 50. So, have a little drink there. So that's that section of vinyl. And now we come over here. Uh, you saw this earlier. This is all video. I might as well just show it. This is videos. These are all DVDs. Down this side, all the way down to here. Down there are some laser discs. Do you ever remember laser discs? We'll talk about those one day. Those are laser discs. Um, music videos, as you can probably see. This is all music videos. PAL, Blu ray, DVD, music. We got animation here, Disney, Blu rays. It's all Blu rays. Blu rays, Blu rays, Blu rays. This is sci fi Blu rays. And horror Blu rays. Horror, sci fi. As you can see, I'm a big horror fan. Horror DVDs. Uh, over here is Japanese movies. Yes, these are Asian. I love Japanese movies. These are Asian films all through here. Chinese, Japanese movies. A massive Godzilla collection, as you can see. And then we have Blu-ray TV series. Too deep. Over in this corner. Hiding right back here. My CDs. CDs, 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 CDs. CDs, 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 You got a, bit of bug, a whole whack of Funkos there. Hiding up in behind there are anime DVDs. Um, some special CD box sets there. Various CDs. This is where my CDs are. There's more videos hiding in these cabinets. Uh, let's come around. Say hello to our, say hello to our lizard. Where is he? There he is. Say hello, Draco. Uh, so coming around, we have the bulk of the rest of the record collection, or not quite all of it, but most of it. So in here, in these 2000s colored pop and rock vinyl pressings. So all in here is colored vinyl, limited edition colored vinyl pressings, um, all through these. Up to this point here, when we get to 2000s, new and reissue pop and rock. So I like to put these things here. I see a lot of people do. It makes it for a very artistic room. Constantly changing these record covers in the fronts of all my bins because record art is great. So yeah, these two here, colored pop and rock. Then we get to here and this is all reissue. These are all new releases and remasters and reissues. All new releases, 2000s releases, anything after 2000 uh, that was pressed and released after 2000 in all of these bins. One, two, three, four, five, these six bins, all new remastered, reissued vinyl. All through here. All through here. Lots of room in each bin to add more. Like I said, I'm always reorganizing my vinyl. Up in this corner, sleeves. All sorts of sleeves. I keep sleeves in the other room. Vinyl storage solution sleeves are in the other room. But here's all sorts of sleeves. 
your outers and inners uh, in the corner there. Then down here, we have 2000s limited numbered LPs. So these are gold stamp, whatever, these, or hand. These are numbered LPs, limited edition numbered recordings in here. Then from there, we have 60s through 90s import pop and rock LPs. And that starts there. And these are all 60s through 90s pressings, imports from other countries up to there. Then starting here is all my 60s through 90s Canadian pop rock LP pressings. All through there. And a lot of these, most of, just about every single one of these, not all of them, but I would say 90%, 80, 80 to 90% of these, I originally purchased as a teenager. And I've always kept them in excellent condition. So that's all through here, all through these bins. And that's all my old stuff. Like that, there you go. First pressing, Madonna. Original first pressing, Canadian first pressing. I bought this newer record store, and as you can see, I still have the hype sticker and everything, and the shrink. There you go. So now coming up here, now we get to the good stuff. Or it's all good stuff, but I kind of call this the good, good stuff. Here, picture discs. As you can see, brand new Aussie album. Love this album. I don't care what anybody says. I love this album. And I love this pressing. People have been knocking picture discs for a while. Yeah, picture discs absolutely suck. The Big Biscuit in the 70s and 80s. Absolute crap. Unplayable. But honestly, these 2000s picture discs, other than like a surface rumble when you first drop the needle, which disappears as soon as the song starts, I think they sound fantastic. I love them. I have no problem playing them. Um, I'm not gonna, they're not gonna wear out because I'm not gonna play them a hundred thousand times for the grooves to wear out. But in my opinion, new picture discs, people stop knocking picture discs. They sound fine. If you're that critical about how they sound, I don't know. Not my deal. Uh, so yeah, well, this is all picture discs all through here. Mostly all new releases. I think there's a couple really old ones, unplayable, but they're there. And then back here, we've got seasonal LPs, meaning basically Christmas, Christmas and Halloween. A little section of seasonal music. And it's my picture discs. That's over in that has been there. Now we're going over here to these classic seal test milk bins that everybody used to steal from the back of their grocery stores to put their records in, which are now just premium. Yes, yes, I thievery these bins, just like everybody my age as a teenager. Um... Yeah, they're great. They were, they're the only way to store music. And now, starting, let's start at the right. So going from right to left in these bins, we've got 10 inch, new and old, meaning new 10 inch pressings, plus old original 70s, 80s, 10 inch. Behind that, we've got old 12 inch singles and EPs. Old meaning 60s, 70s, 80s, 12 inches, 12 inch singles. And behind that are new 12-inch singles and EPs, new pressings. It's 2000s pressings. Sometimes I'll relabel that to say 2000s and so on. Next to that, we've got Record Store Day. This is the second part of Record Store Day. Record Store Day actually goes here, here. But behind Record Store Day, we have old, rare, import, jazz, instrumental, jazz. Old, rare, meaning 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, mostly instrumental and jazz and it's all imported from around the world things that were never released here like mr fausto papetti and his cheesecake covers so this is all old stuff here and next to that like i said this is all record store day record store day going back to the beginning of when i started buying going to record store day so those are all mixed in here. It doesn't matter the artist. It's just Record Store Day. I keep all my Record Store Day stuff together. This is all Record Store Day in here. Next to that, we've got Extreme Limited LPs. This section here is basically anything that was 500. I would I kind of categorize it as 500 or less pressings of an album. 
uh, anything less than 500, anything autographed, anything that comes exclusively from an artist themselves, not uh, available retail. Um, like I said, anything that's been signed, very limited, DJ copies, whatever. These are extremely limited. Less than 500 copies, like I said. Some real gems in here. So that's why I call that, that's that, that section. And then last but not least behind it, we've got old, rare, and band LPs. So these are, these are six, 60s, 70s, 80s uh, pressings, uh, which include colored vinyl, because back in the 70s, 80s, colored vinyl was few and far between, so I consider them pretty rare. You don't see very much colored vinyl from that, that age. Um, back then, there was like red, white, blue, green, yellow. There were no splatters and mixes. There was really basic, basic four or five colors of colored vinyl back in those days. Um, not like now where there's just a bajillion colors. So here we've got rare, rare, rare recordings. Things would have covers, right? Covers that were banned or never released. Uh, gold stamp promos are in here. Alternate cover albums are in here. Uh, band covers are in here. Uh, and like I said, autographed. Uh, this is all like really rare stuff. Uh, band or whatever. That's that section. So there's the bulk of my records. Uh, that's the bulk of my record collection between these bins, these bins, these bins, or these bins, these bins. Through that door in the distance. Do, 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 is where I keep uh, dupes, crap records, whatever. Stuff I'm going to sell, stuff on Kijiji, eBay, whatever. Dupes. Stuff. Just stuff. And stuff that's being cleaned. I got my spin clean in there. It's a laundry room. Yeah, there's some posters there for you. Some more stuff. And we're coming around to the rest of the man cave. So that's that's everything there. Now we're going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I put this back. Yeah, I know it was over here first. It's put back here now. I'm up behind my record collection from the Legacy of the Beast tour last year. Fantastic tour. So that's all that stuff. And I'm sorry if this video is going sideways, upside down. I'm just, you know, I'm on the walk. So we got stuff up here. We got a pair of speakers up there. These are uh, uh, speakers I actually put together myself. Uh, cabinets, Max Penman Woofers, Bose Tweeters. Uh, they are my rear speakers uh, of my system. And, yeah. So coming around here, we got my office area. Not going to get into that. We've got the couch. Da -da 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 -da. We've got uh, gaming. That's gaming down there. Collectibles up in there. I'm not going to show those. Uh, game systems. As you can see, yeah. Lots of game systems. And yeah. more game systems. More game systems. Yes, gaming, 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 gaming. There's my subwoofer. These are my JBL speakers. My fronts, my mains, JBL. Great speakers, fantastic. These are video games hiding in there. Uh, my TV, of course, right here. And uh, excuse the uh, lighting here. That's what the lighting I was using for the studio. It's not normally there. Um, but up here we have some autographed pictures of people. Uh, Anita Strauss. Alice Cooper's guitarist, brilliant female guitarist, autographed right there from crowdfunding for her debut album. Up here, I've got ledges, ledges and ledges and ledges, and I change the records up here pretty much weekly, uh, sometimes a couple times a week. And all of these ones currently up here are ones that are from that new bin, sealed, waiting to be played. They're kind of like next in my playlist, if you want to put it that way. I move them from there to here to remind me which is the oldest ones that I've still not played. I uh, found this in the wild recently, Kate Bush Lionheart. And that's a Japanese pressing mint condition. And so, yeah, I'm all changing the records on these shelves uh, to stuff waiting to be played. Next to, like, drop onto the turntable, which happens to be right here. This is my uh, Rega P1. Love this turntable. I've got a few different color, a few different platters for it. This is an acrylic Hudson Hi-Fi platter on here. I've got actually got this platter in three different colors. Uh, and of course my Ortofon Blue. Love this setup. This is fed into my <coughs> my Yamaha amplifier. I'm a Yamaha man. I've had Yamaha since 1980. My first Yamaha amp lasted me 20 years and I sold it for more than I bought it for. 
and it was fantastic. I had a, another Yamaha amp that ran for about 10 years. It's currently sitting in its box, waiting to be wired up again somewhere else. And this is my latest Yamaha amp about, I don't know, four or five years old. Love this thing. Great thing about this is it's, it's got analog and it's got digital. So love Yamaha, would never listen to anything else. Down here, just DVD, I got a region free DVD player and my Blu-ray, 3D Blu-ray player. And then down here, my Onkyo five CD changer for CDs. And below that, some box sets. Yeah, box sets hiding in here, box sets. And next to that, hiding behind Joe Strummer, more box sets, more box sets. And last but not least, my extensive collection of James Bond 007 soundtrack and tribute LPs. Right there. So that's that. And I believe that is the video. Uh, there's the tripod I was just mounted on. And I believe that's it, folks. There we go. I'm going to splice these two videos together. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I haven't bored you. But yeah, you're going to be seeing things pulled out of all of these bins. And I'll be showing this stuff off. And I really hope you enjoy it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's run long. Probably a total of 35 minutes or so now. I hope you stuck through the whole thing. Um, and I hope I've entertained you. And I hope to see you guys all subscribing and coming back for more. Because I've got so much more to show. This was just the overview. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. And I'm back again one last time for a little quick add-on to the end of this video that I forgot to do. I forgot to show this on my room tour. The one and only thing I forgot. And that's this turntable right here. This is my second turntable. And this is, yes, it's standing up. And for those who have never seen one before, this is a linear tracking turntable. This is a Mitsubishi LT640. I bought it new at a record show back in the early, uh, early mid 80s, somewhere around there. I'm thinking it was early, maybe 83, 84, 85, somewhere around there. Bought it new at a record show. It was the, the latest craze, the newest technology to come out at the time. Uh, they didn't last long, but honestly, I love this thing. <laughs> this thing is so great. It's quite the showpiece. It's a linear tracking turntable. And I will show you here. Opens like so. Stood up. Great for saving space. Um, but yeah, it didn't work uh, with gravity like most turntables. Didn't have a tracking force adjustment. Didn't have counterweights. Uh, it just had a slight spring that would flip the arm towards the record because there's no gravity because it's linear and the arm would not swing like most arms swing across a turntable right this actually slides vertically i can actually turn this on this thing would actually because there's no record on here it was not going to drop the needle but basically it moves the arm linear vertically across the disc we play the music when it's done we finish playing. And that's how they worked. I've since, they worked on a little lighting system here. And what you did is you'd pop this open, put the record on, clamp it closed. The little light sensor here would reflect on little things in somewhere in here. And it, that would tell it the size of the record, whether it was a seven inch, 10 inch or 12 inch. And that would tell the tone arm where to drop on the record. So it was all fully automatic. Uh, you just had to hit start. And the way it went, there was a cueing lever right here. Stop would return it, start would start it. It would uh, automatically sense the size of the record. If it was a seven inch, it would automatically switch to 45. If it was a 10 or 12 inch, 33. You could manually change it here. That was a repeat to repeat that, just play it over again. Um, but it was all fully automatic. I've since retrofitted it with a uh, Audio-Technica cartridge. And it still plays great. Uh, I've got it plugged into a project tucked behind here. Project preamp. Which then runs all the way back to my Yamaha. And by the way, this, uh, which, which I'm just playing a record right now. By the way, this uh, turntable, the Rega, is plugged into a uh, Rega preamp, which then goes into my Yamaha. But yeah, it's sort of like my, you know, I can DJ here. 
two turntables, but I don't use this too much because I prefer my Rego with the Ortofon Blue for playing my records. But I do, it's it's great to have. It's a nice showpiece, piece of memorabilia. And I do play my 45s on it. This thing's great for playing seven inch singles because it's got its own little adapter. So mostly what I play on here are seven inch singles uh, because it saves me from having to lift the platter off and move the belt to the other drive size to switch the speed on the on the Rega because it's the only way you can switch from 45 to 33. So this is great to play 45s on, but the only thing I play on here are seven inch 45s, uh, maybe a 10 inch or something, whatever. I use it once in a blue moon and it's great to have. And that now concludes my room tour. See you all next time. Rock on.